Hey guys, Kev here, and it is time for the full reviews on the Giant Mouse Ace Atelier, or Atelier, if you want to be uh, French, I think it's Atelier. Um, I'm going to call it the Atelier. You guys let me know in the comments what I did wrong or said wrong. Love to hear about that, but... Um, First and foremost, I want to say uh, these were provided by Giant Mouse Knives. So I signed up for their affiliate program. Um, so take what I say with a grain of salt if that's something that matters to you. Um, this is actually the second batch of knives from them. I got two of these and they had some QC issues and they replaced them. If you watch my unboxing disassembly of these knives... Uh, these also had, you know, minor issues. This one was very minor. It just needed to be tightened. Um, this one had a uh, lock stick, which I actually fixed myself by filing down the lock bar slightly with my Leatherman Charge Plus, and I just let it break in, and it's been absolutely perfect. I gotta admit, I fucking love this knife. I did not expect to love it as much as I do. I mean, I, I loved the Grand. This is the baby Grand, basically. And I really like a lot of Vox designs. I like a lot of Giant Mouse designs. But, um, you know, I'm not a big fan of Italian-made knives just because of the QC, which was evident here. But, despite all that, I freaking love this knife. So, um it really does shine through the design, the um, quality of their blades and ergonomics and all of that um, does shine through on this, even though there are some little niggles that bother me. Um, it doesn't stop me from recommending this knife. It doesn't stop me from uh, saying it's absolutely wonderful and one of the best giant mouse knives out there. I just would recommend if you do buy one that you try to buy it direct or from a dealer with a good, um, you know, exchange return policy. Um, because if you do have some QC issues, you want to make sure you can get them taken care of pretty easily. But I do believe Giant Mouse is uh, very good with QC. My experience was fantastic. Um, so got to give them big props for that. That is very important to me. I say this all the time. The fact that there's an issue doesn't really bother me. It's how the company handles and resolves those issues. And Giant Mouse gets two big old thumbs up from me for that. Um, would love to hear anybody else's experiences down in the comments. Um, so we can have a discussion about it, but let's get into the knife, right? Um, should we check them out separately or just leave it like this and, and we'll go back and forth? I think what we'll do is just go back and forth. So, um, starting with the statics, man, uh, this knife is gorgeous. So I love the, uh, Giant Mouse Ace Grand. It is, you know, one of the knives that put them on the map, in my opinion. I know the Biblio was huge. Um, but the Grand was just what put them on the map for me. Absolutely loved the design language on that knife. But it was a little big for me, right? And again, the Italian QC played a part in how much I loved the knife. Because I just had some issues with the detent being light and, and stuff like that. Um, I think... I had some lock bar issues, and the lock bar access is a big deal on these. Uh, we'll talk about that, but um, depends on how you manipulate the knife. So, anyway, the aesthetics are just fantastic for me. I love the handle design, just the simple uh, lines and curves and everything in it. Um, the blade shape with the little bit of poon in the clip point. I mean, that hole, the pear-shaped hole is becoming my favorite rapidly um the beautiful uh satin grind lines on here um you have really nice hardware the little pop of color on the backspacer in this case it's titanium in this case it's uh brass i do wish they were swapped though um they could have anodized the titanium to look that way you know a dark color or something like that 
Um, just for the weight purposes, I wish um, they had done that because this one's not milled out. This is a pretty chunky boy. It's got to be around five ounces um, for, you know, what is, what, three and a quarter inches on the blade, a little over three inches, something like that. Um, but I'll admit I quickly got used to it, and I actually really like the feel of this in hand. So it's not the end of the world, but I do think if they had swapped these, it would have made sense. And I also think... They've done that before, right? They've done the micarta with brass, and then they did the titanium with titanium. So I don't know why they chose to do it this way, but hey, what are you going to do? It's not a huge deal. Um, so aesthetically, it's cool. It's got the wire clip, which um, you guys know I'm a fan of the wire clip. Do it on our own knives, which is cool. Um, it is reversible, which is awesome. Uh, so you can carry this lefty or righty. It is a liner lock, so lefty or righty doesn't really matter how you operate this knife it works just as well right um carries just as well um you've seen my disassembly or you could go see it if you want i'll try to link it somewhere um but it is a little bit easier than i, I thought it would be um especially this one you just unscrew these three t6s t8 pivot um, and then you have your T8 on the uh, clip screw, which I don't think needs to come out to disassemble, but I usually just take it out anyway. This scale will pop up. I think I did need a little bit of just a plastic pry bar to get it to pop off the stop pin. Um, I think there might be two pins under here, but can't remember right this second. And then um, you just have your standard, you know, stop pin pivot situation. It does come with steel cage bearing. Sorry. Brass cage steel bearings. Pretty sure that's how it was. Uh, definitely steel balls, which is unfortunate. Uh, Italy needs to stop doing that and start using ceramic. Um, I swapped both of these out for ceramic. I did try skiffs, but this one just would not center up. It went too far over to this side with skiffs. So I just put in some basic brass caged ceramic ball bearings. And it honestly did make a big difference in the action and just the feel. Um, the steel just does not feel as good. Both of these feel way better on the ceramic balls. Um, this one has a liner in here. So you take these screws off. And then this one, I think that's why I'm confusing it. This one, you do have to take the clip screw out. And then this piece will come, obviously, the pivot. And then this piece will come out. And then there's a liner. This one doesn't have that liner, so you don't need to take that screw out. Um, but once you take the clip screw out, then you take this off, and the liner will be there. Then you got to pop the liner off, obviously. And then, you know, pivot, blade, all that stuff comes off, and you are in. Not super complicated, but not like a quick and easy disassembly. If you want to see me do it five times in one video, go check out my disassembly video. Um, so I got pretty good at it. Um, but yeah, so aesthetically, really good. Uh, ergonomically, it is very, very comfortable in hand. Now, you know, it is a smaller knife than the Grand, obviously. And some people are going to take issue with this grip. And they're going to say, oh, it's too small. My pinky's hanging off or whatever. Right? I have a large glove size hand. And I'm essentially, you know, coming off the handle here. Well... That's not how I hold a knife, right? If it has a flat spot, I use it as a choil. And this is meant to be held that way. I'm pretty sure it's meant to be held that way. Because when I choke up like that, my thumb lands where? Boom. Right on that jimping. If I hold it back here, you know, I'd have to reach up to get to the jimping. So I'm pretty sure they want you to climb up here. And some people don't understand that. Some people don't want to do that. But if you look at a knife like Vero... Like, why would you hold this back here when you have that perfectly flat spot that's like a choil, right? But um, there are people out there who just don't think that it's meant to be used that way, right? Here's another example. Kaiser Drop Bear. A lot of people are just going to hold it like this. Sure, it works just fine. But you can choke up like this. Um, so it's, you know, obviously up to you, but... If you're going to get this knife and only hold it back here, it might not be that comfortable, right? Now I have the clip sort of there. Um, if I hold it in the right hand, you know, now it's, the clip's kind of burying into my, my palm a little bit. But if I just choke up like I'm supposed to, in my opinion, 
it feels really good. I feel locked into the knife. Let me uh, grab the one that has the lefty side clip. Um, I feel locked into the knife. That clip rests nestled now. This part is past my palm, right? You see that? So it's not digging in where if I hold it back here, where's that? Where are those tongs at? Well, they're right into my palm. It's kind of uncomfortable. But this is how you hold it, and it feels fantastic. So uh, if I'm doing any kind of slicing and stuff like that, you just hold it like that, you know? And then if you're doing stuff utility style, you're holding it like this. Um, I just don't see the need to hold it back here. Um, so anyway, that's my thoughts on ergonomics. I think it's fantastic. Uh, very comfortable. It's not the most comfortable knife that Vox or, you know, Anso or whatever has designed. Like the uh, Urban EC F5.5 to me is more comfortable because it has that choil. You know, it's more meant to be a choil. And your finger just nestles in here. It's just very locked in, very comfortable right there. Um, where this to me is meant to be held like this, but it's not as designed for it, if that makes sense. I know that doesn't make sense, but hey. Um, but fantastic for me. Haven't had any issues with the ergonomics. I don't feel any hot spots. Nothing's out of place. Like it just feels good. And you have that jimping right there. Now, the crown is spined to the jimping, and then a little bit after, and then up here, you have the, the swedging. Um, you know, um, I like it. I think the jimping is aggressive enough. The corner where the, where the, uh, crown spine ends and the jimping starts is a little bit sharp right here. Um, you can feel it a little bit with your thumb, but it's not a big deal. You get good traction. I enjoy it. Um, I didn't mention, well, I did, but this one is a uh, green canvas micarta L max blade. And this one was $200 or is $200. As I record this, um, at least this one was out of stock on Giant Mouse's website. But uh, Blade HQ had them. I'm sure some other places have them. I will link what I can down below. Definitely check out those links. It helps the channel if you use my links, codes, all that stuff. But this one's Green Canvas by Carta. Titanium Backspacer. This one is Titanium with this really cool milling pattern. If you look at their uh, marketing photos, I was a little confused. I thought there was a blue tie one and then this one. But it's just the lighting and the angles and whatnot that they have in those photos. So it looks blue sometimes. But it, this is the color that you're buying if you get the titanium one, as far as I understand. Um, but this one's also going to be uh, Elmax. I believe it's the same blade. Sort of machine satin blade. So everything's the same except for you have titanium instead of micarta and you have no liner liner, right? Um, ergos, uh, cutting. I have cut a lot with this. Um, you know, usually I'm not the guy who's doing a ton of cutting um, with review knives. I usually, you know, direct you guys to other people for that information. Um, and I just tell you what I've done and the little bit and explain it, but... You know, I've cut a good bit of cardboard. I've opened a shit ton of packages with this thing. I've cut some clamshell. And I got to say, the LMAX is done extremely well by Italy on this one. You know, I'll, I'll just say MKM, I guess. Is it Fox? Whatever. Um, it is sticky. Stupid sticky sharp. Um, even after using it quite a bit. But I did strop it. Um, and it's got a good thin grind on it. Um, it's got a tall enough blade with that, um, you know, it's almost a full flat grind. I guess it's a saber grind, but it's almost full flat grind. Just really works extremely well. The ergos lend to a good, you know, cut. Um, the tip is not, you know, it's not like a clip point in the sense that it's coming up. Um, but I don't know if I'd call it, a, I guess it is a drop point, but, you know, it's kind of a harpoon drop point or something. It's it's not really a clip point, I guess, but it's also not a draw. I don't know. Whatever it is, it's really good. You know, I haven't had to do a ton of utility cutting, but I've had to get into packages like this, you know, and it's worked perfectly fine. I cut out some shipping labels with it, had no issue um, because I returned some shoes and I had to actually print the label and cut it out. Um, but yeah, it cuts extremely well. The LMAX feels in my opinion, like it's done really well. 
it does drop back really well. Um, and, you know, I can't speak to, you know, the heat treat or anything like that. But it feels better than other Italian knives I've handled. It feels better than their M390 for sure. Um, so, hard to say because I didn't, like, use it use it like crazy and then test the edge and all that shit. I just, you know, cut a lot with it. I used it a lot, but it wasn't on like tough ass materials that wore the edge down, you know? Um, but I think they did a great job with it. I'd love to see somebody, you know, hardness test it and, and get all that information. But honestly, it's performed fantastically for me. So I don't really need to think about that. I'm not really worried about it. I'm going to say it's great. So, there you go. Um, I mostly use this one because this one dominated my pocket, but I did use this one a little bit um, and it was um, just as good. Basically the same, right? Um, carry. So same thing here. I mean, it's fantastic. Um, wire clip goes in deep. You have a nice flush seated screw. I did notice that when you flip the clip over, you'll see how that screw kind of sticks up a little bit there. But if you look at, say, the Micarta one here, it sits flush, and that's on the right side. It's really weird. Um, so I don't know what that is, but both of these went on this side, on the lefty side, that screw just sticks up more. And yes, I tried tightening it and all that stuff. I tried a bunch of stuff. Nothing, um, nothing worked. So it's fine. It's just kind of odd that it doesn't seat as far on the left side. Um, but this one's obviously going to be lighter weight. This one's probably right around three ounces, and this one's like five. So take that into consideration. Um, personally, when it comes to the acoustics, the uh, feel in hand, the looks, and everything, I will take those two extra ounces um, and go with the titanium. But some people will not accept that. They will have to have that three ounces. So you are going to be looking at my card, my friend. Um sounds so this one oh man it's got good pops it's broken in really nicely um at first and it could have been the first one i had that they replaced i'm not sure it had a really kind of tingy ringy sound um that really to me screams poor tolerances in there on the liner um, I know that because of our own knife, the mash, where I wanted that tightened up for our V2. Um, but this one sounds great. Just a good click and pop. Nothing rattly or like reverberating, if that makes sense. So the sounds are really good on this one. Um, the uh, Micarta one, a little duller, but... Still good. You know, nothing to write home about here. This one I'd probably call like a 7 out of 10. This one's more like a 5. Just good. Yeah, average. All right. Action slash fidget factor. This is where we're getting to the nitty gritty on some stuff. Um, now, first I want to note, I've now handled four of these, right? And um, the first two I got, both of them had lighter detents. I mean, it was tough to flick like i could almost fail them every time i mean it was really really light um now these two are this one's better like you can give it just a normal flick and it flicks out thumb flicks are money on these um really good thumb flick you can see it you know no detent lash. It's not shaking out or anything. Not the best detent, but definitely serviceable. I would be fine with it if this is what I had, right? Now, this one is money. I mean, this one just pops out, fires. It. it this is the perfect detent for this knife, in my opinion, right? Now, because of that, you have more lock bar tension, obviously, so it's a little bit tougher on the thumb to get, you know, to move it. Um, where this one, because it's a little bit lighter detent, a little less lock bar pressure, 
is real easy to just slide right out of the way. So these are trade-offs, guys. This is the kind of stuff, you know, yes, you can tune lock bars to be strong detents with not a ton of pressure. You can do all that. But, you know, most of the time, that's just going to be the, the way it is, right? You're going to have a stronger lock bar pressure with a stronger detent. So you got to say, you got to decide what you want, right? I would prefer this stronger snap detent and just having to deal with a little more on the lock bar and it's broken in so that's the thing this one came with that stick i got that figured out and now i've just kind of it's just broken in it's gotten easier and easier to push out of the way um to where now either my thumb is just used to it or it has broken in and it's just fantastic it's second nature at this point right um so i would take this one nine out of ten times or ten out of ten times but this is perfectly fine um Closing action is, you know, uh, it's not going to drop to your nail. And this is where we're going to talk about lock bar access. But um, you'll see there, it's it's a shaker. Even with the ceramic, it's a shaker down. But it's not, like, bad. It's just, you know, a little bit of shaking. And it's uh, very smooth. So I don't close them that way usually. I just go like this. And um, this one, same thing, but just a little more droppy. Right. If you go all the way down here and get it right, you can get it to hit your nail if you want. But, you know, I'm doing this. And that is where we get to the lock bar access. And this is going to be most people's biggest gripe with this knife besides the Italy and all that stuff, right? Um, there's two ways to close a knife. I mean, there's more than two ways. You can do it lefty where you come across this way and kind of drop it down and then shake it, right? But... Let's just say there's two schools of thought on closing a knife, right? You have um, this. This is this is okay. So we got two extremes here. Okay, we have the black mirror from Max Ace. Look at that lock bar excess. I mean, I could fit my whole thumb in there. And then you have the Ace Atlier from Giant Mouse, where you have no cutout. You just have this little bit of lock bar sticking out. And you have to, I mean, you can just slide right over it. You know what I mean? You have to dig in there with your thumb to get it, right? So the two ways to close a knife are like this, which Max Ace knows that us nerds, knife action nerds, want to do this, right? We want to have that blade swing down and hit us in the nail. Or disengage sideways and kind of just touch us and then you know that's what she said and then close it like this right that's one way to do it this what they think you're gonna do is hold it like this push this over and then close it like this this is your gentleman's way of closing a folding knife, right? At least a frame lock or liner lock, right? This knife is not meant for that. You know, they have a detent ramp on there. Like they have all this stuff on there that is not meant for you to do this, right? They want you to go like this, <laughs> okay? They want you to go like this. So if you take that and keep that in mind, the lock bar on access on this is actually fine because it works perfectly for that. And if you think about the guys designing this, Boxnaz, Anso, I don't think those are fidgety, drop it to your nail guys, right? A lot of knife makers are not that. They are doing this. And so they design knives that way. They think it looks better to have, you know, a full scale over here, not have a big cutout with the lock bar showing. And they're not worried about having you drop it to your nail. So you have to keep that in mind, okay? If you are somebody who has to close it this way, because I've, I've kind of been that way until this knife where I'm like, okay, I get it now, right? This knife is not going to be for you. You are going to be pissed off. You are just going to jack up your thumb trying to get in here, and you're going to use the corner of your nail like right here, and it's going to start chipping away to try to do this. I mean, I can't even do it to do that um 
Maybe this one would be easier to come across. You know, like, it's just not meant for it. So just don't even bother. Don't get upset. Don't buy it and get upset. Now, you do have the option. Some people are going to just cut this back. And you know what? Long term, I might do that. I might have somebody cut this back a little bit, and then I can get in there better. But I still think it's just meant to be used a different way. And I'm fine with that. Now that I'm used to it, and I know, and, I, and I've thought about it, and you know, I, I'm cool with it. And so that's your decision to make, right? I feel like next thing I'm going to do is like, buy a Sapenza or something. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so in the end, the Ace Atelier from Giant Mouse, I think once we get past the QC issues I had, which again, Giant Mouse's customer service, top notch. You guys are awesome. I think what we are left with is a fantastic pocket knife, a wonderful knife to use and carry a wonderful knife to reverse flick. I mean, it flicks like a dream. It really does. Um, bow, bow. I mean, it just, it, and then you get right into that cutting grip. It's just money. And I think another reason the lock wire access doesn't bother me as much is because I'm left-handed. So I don't, it doesn't matter left-handed. You just kind of go like this, you know? Um, so it's almost a benefit to be lefty on this one. <laughs> Um, but that flick is money. Like, I, I don't know. I just love this knife. There's there's just something about it that's special that makes me love it. And that's the best way to explain it to you guys. Um, I highly recommend it. Again, make sure you buy from a dealer that you know has a good uh, policy. And again, I'm pretty positive Giant Mouse is going to stand behind this if you have any issues. Hopefully you don't. Hopefully what happened to me was a fluke, you know. Um, and I can't wait to see what they do next. Now I will say I would love to see a, uh, version of this made by Riot. Um, as much as I love this knife right here, imagine this made by Riot with milled out scales, belt satin, like just, it would be pure sex and, uh, I'd be on board for that guy, but, um, they have a lot of cool stuff out there if you guys are interested. The Nazca is cool. The uh, Nibbler is awesome. The Rib is dope. Um, there's just so many cool things that they make. The Sonoma V2. Um, there's some that I need to get my hands on, like the Corda. And uh, I need to try a Titanium Nazca. I still haven't even tried a Nazca. But I've heard so much good about it. Um, so, yeah. That's it. I love you guys. Links down below if you want to pick up one of these. Uh, helps the channel if you use them. If not, no big deal. If you pick up anything from Giant Mouse, you can use my link down there and my discount code LeftyEDC will save you five bucks and it helps the channel. So um, mutually beneficial there and it'll work on anything at Giant Mouse. So um, that's it. Thank you to Giant Mouse so much for sending these out to me. I'm sorry if I was a little bit of a pain in the ass. Um, I tend to do that, I guess, um, but I appreciate it. You guys have been fantastic. So I love you guys. Hope you have a fantastic day, and I will catch you later.